Welcome back to Free ERP. My name is Haley and today we are going to be covering RMA entry. In this video, I am going to explain what RMA entry is, why we use it, how to navigate to RMAs in P21, and how to enter an RMA. This video will be a bit of a longer one, so don't forget that you can find the timestamps for everything discussed in the description box. If you missed out on the last three videos, you might be wondering why P21 looks so different. All of our videos are now based in the P21 web client. Don't worry though, anything we do in the web client will be applicable in the desktop version. Before we get started, let's discuss what an RMA is. RMA stands for Return Material Authorization. We use RMAs to accept material back into our warehouse when a customer makes a return. It's no different than when you make a return to Amazon or your local Walmart. Now we'll discuss how to navigate to RMAs in P21. First, open the Orders module. Next, go to the Order Processing submodule. After that, open the Transaction menu. Finally, select RMAs. You can also go to the search bar and search for RMAs to find the window faster. Once the RMAs window loads, you'll see the Order tab. Enter your customer ID, then press Enter. Next, enter the credit location ID that was the sales location on your original order. If the material is being returned to a location different than the sales location, change the source location in the Ship To tab. If you know it, go ahead and enter the customer Ship To ID that the item was originally shipped to. This should match the original invoiced order so that the correct sales tax will be credited. Make sure that the sales reps on the RMA match the sales reps listed on the order. Enter the contact ID of the person who is returning the material. Next, enter the original invoice's PO number for the items being returned in the PO field. The invoice number and the original sales order number can be found on the item line in the Sales History tab. In the lower section of the window, enter the item ID that is being returned and press Enter. You will be prompted to link the item to the original invoice. After you select Yes, you will be taken to the Sales History tab. A list of invoice records for the item will display. Right-click on the invoice that the item was originally shipped against and select Link to this RMA line. Linking to the original invoice will auto-populate the RMA with the original unit price, unit cost, and quantity. However, the unit price and quantity can be overridden. If you don't link to an original invoice, the system will populate the unit price with the customer's current pricing. If the item the customer is returning is tied to multiple invoices, you will need to enter the item on multiple lines so that you can link each line to the original invoice. Enter the return quantity. The quantity will default to the quantity from the linked invoice. Make sure you change this to the actual quantity being returned. After that, enter the unit price you will be giving the customer credit for this item if the amount doesn't auto-populate. To enter another RMA, press Enter through the current item, then repeat the same steps we did for the first item. Now, if a restocking fee will be charged, Press Enter to get a blank line. Enter the part number Restocking Fee. If you do not have a Restocking Fee Item ID, you can easily go to Item Maintenance to create one. Next, enter the percent of the Restocking Fee in the Return Quantity field. Enter the full value of the RMA as a negative value in the Unit Price field. 
if you want to get the RMA total to be used for calculating the restocking fee, select the Totals tab and make note of the subtotal amount. Use the amount to calculate the restocking fee. In Ordered Note, make sure you insert a note line detailing the restocking fee. Another method of applying a restocking fee is to enter the part number restocking fee. Then, enter a return quantity of 1. Enter a negative value in the unit price field for the amount you will be charging the customer for the return. This will require a manual calculation of the restocking charge. Make sure you enter the order note detailing the restocking fee. Next, if you need to credit freight, select the Ship Info tab and enter the freight code and freight amount to be credited as a positive amount. On the Reason Codes tab, enter the appropriate reason for the return. After that, go to the Read Minutes tab and select what type of credit will be issued. If you are refunding as cash or by credit card, enter the refund as the same you would enter payments on a sales order. Then, you'll go to the Front Counter tab. Under RMA Acknowledgement, select either Print, Fax, and or email. Finally, select Save. If you selected Print, you will be prompted to select a printer. Select the printer and then hit OK. Thank you for watching today's video. I know that today's was a long one, so thank you if you made it all the way to the end. If you want to rewatch any part of this video, you can find the timestamps below. Before you go, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new P21 related content. It helps out the channel and will keep you up to date from when we post a new video. See you next time.